Hey, Maryland legislators, I was wondering if you could do me a favor, please. Can one of you or a few of you try to find my uh, delegate, Leroy Myers? See, a couple years back, uh, I got injured on the job, and um, I had a, a disectomy, uh, the bulging disc removed. And during that time, I was on Percocet, and I was told that I had to go do light duty while taking Percocet, a class 4 narcotic. I refused to do that. Well, the insurance company cut off my money. And uh, then I ended up going to a hearing, and the commissioner did a really dirty thing, which he said, well, because you were going to physical therapy, which was mandatory, and had I not gone to physical therapy, they could have cut my money off with that. But he said, because I had gone to physical therapy, twice a week it was okay for me to go five times a week to uh, a light duty job while high on Percocet and the funny thing about this is is the fact that I have a class B license and uh, it's against the law it's illegal and as a matter of fact just recently uh, I believe it was Connecticut was doing uh, cultures of people's mouths swabs of people's mouths to see whether or not they are driving while under the influence of narcotics, you know, uh, stuff that's prescribed. So, with that said, my delegate, um, I got a hold of his office, and his, I don't know, secretary or whatever her his point person was, she decided, well, he can't help you. He has nothing to do with workman's comp. Well, I beg to differ, because it's you delegates and senators to put forth legislation. You're the ones that write bills. You're the ones that go to other people within the house and you say, hey, look, this is wrong. This this needs to be changed. Well, they for whatever reason, he was insulated and kept from me. I couldn't even get a visit over at his office, which is just down the road from me. And so that went on. My money was cut off. And uh, the insurance company uh, got the upper hand. They took my little two-thirds of my money away from me because of the ruling by Commissioner Herwig. Now, I went and had, oh, by the way, the, disec the disectomy, my, my disc, if I can do this right, my disc, because the, the bulge was removed, fell backwards and broke. The insurance company wanted to settle with me and not allow me to have surgery because my disc was breaking and the disc could have cut nerves and I could have been paralyzed. And I said, no, I need to get my back fixed. So I had a disc fusion. During my disc fusion, my ulnar nerve, they left me face down on, with pressure on my ulnar nerve, and it created problems with my arm. So my arm had to have surgery. So again, I reached out, or tried to, tried to find my delegate, this guy who's MIA, missing in action for some reason. And I left messages. And just to show you, if I could get this close enough, um, that's the number, Monica. You see that? I'm sorry. It, I'm sorry, Nicole. It's Nicole. That's the number I've been calling to try to get a hold of. My delegate, Leroy Myers. And all I said was, you know, and I knew you guys were in session. I know your sessions go from, I believe it's January to April. And I said, look, just make an appointment for me. I'd like to sit down. There's a lot of things that's wrong with workman's comp. Workman's comp has a lot of very, very, very dangerous things for people who are out. You know, look, first of all, we can't fake injuries. We can't, we, our do doctors aren't going to sit there and say, oh, well, this person, you know, oh, yeah, I'll, yeah I'll, I'll look out for you. They don't do that because why? Their livelihood's on the line. People that are legitimately hurt are being forced to go back to work and there are no, there's, there's nothing to help us. And let me tell you something. We have to go, this, this is another issue that I needed to get in front of Leroy Myers, who for some reason can't talk to me. But we're supposed to live off a of two-thirds pay. Thank God my daughter's out of the house. So I don't have the extra overhead that I normally do. She's out on her own. But with that two-thirds pay, we're also expected to go to every appointment that's set up. Because if we don't, we're in trouble. And we can get everything cut off. So... We have to spend, and you know how much gas is. So now, oh, and, and you, you get paid for mileage, but guess what? They don't have to pay you until two, three years after 
your case is settled. Huh? Why, why can't they pay? Why can't you be given money right away after you go to a doctor? I have to go to Baltimore. I have to go out to Columbia. I live in Western Maryland. And I have to go for these surgeries. It comes out of my pocket. And maybe someday they'll reimburse me. I mean, these, these are all these dirty little things that are going on. In Pennsylvania, fine example, the money that was cut off, my money that got cut off because I did not want to go to the light duty job because I was high on Percocet and I have a Class B CDL and it goes against everything that we're taught as a Class L, as a Class uh, B CDL driver, everything that we're taught to go against. In Pennsylvania, the insurance company would have had to file a request to cut the money off. Then we would have had a hearing. In Maryland, they just cut the money off and you're screwed. And then you got to go beg people for money. You got to go beg for help. This this is this system's wrong. When a person thinks about workman's comp, they think it's there for us. It's there for when we get hurt. Not there to punish us, not there to force us to go back while we're still injured and still high on pills and medications. That's what it's supposed to be for. But again, my delegate, Leroy Myers, has disappeared. Senator Edwards as well. He's the, also, he's the other person I tried to get a hold of who didn't want to have anything to do with it. Why? Probably because right now I don't have money that I can put in somebody's campaign. I can't give the you know, fund them. Or maybe they're part of the insurance company's people. Maybe the insurance company, you know, gives their... Uh, gives them a certain amount of money for them to be elected. I don't know. But all I know is I have never committed a crime in my state, have never done anything wrong, have given 19 years of voluntary service to Frederick, Maryland, where I am a president of a rec council, and I coach and never have taken a dime of anybody's money. I do it on a volunteer basis, and this is how I get treated. I'm with. I'm one of those people that you say, "Wow, you know, there's people like you out there. You're just giving your time. You're doing the right thing. You're giving your service to the community, and and we get crapped on. And where is my delegate? Where is the person I need to stand in my corner saying, "You know what, Mr. Rathel? You know what, Mark? This is tough. This is tough. We need to make changes." And the last thing I want to throw out there, then I'm done. But fine, Leroy, please. You know, that'd be nice. If you can find him, Mr. Myers, you're somewhere out there. The last thing I want to say is I will benefit from nothing. What I'm asking for, I get zero out of. This isn't so I get something. This is so the next poor Mark Rathel that pops up and gets injured at work doesn't have to go through the hell I've gone through. This is horrible. It, it's demeaning. It, it makes you feel like, like you're not a real person, barely getting by, barely having money, scraping by, having an insurance company just dictating policy with commissioners that, that shrug at the fact that I didn't want to drive high on medication because I could kill somebody or myself. You know, I'm not a bad person. You might not like me because I got the guts to come out here and say this stuff. That's fine. Then I ask you, what are your issues that you don't like me for speaking out? But the bottom line is this. I'm a good person. I'm a good citizen. And I do, I volunteer. I volunteer for a community that I don't even live in. And I help people. I help young kids. So, again, where is my delegate? Where is my senator? Where are any of you people that are in Annapolis? Why aren't you looking out for the well-being? You need to overhaul workman's comp. That's the bottom line, because it's not there to look out for us. It's there to pay off people, to get it over and done with. But people aren't over and done with. We're real people. We're out here. We're suffering. I'm high on medicine all the time, and I hate it. But that's how it is. Why? Because the insurance company drags it out and drags it out and drags it out. But if I had a delegate who would take a half hour to listen to me, and sit there and go talk to other delegates and other senators and say, what the hell? How is this happening to our people? Maryland citizens. You know, us guys that pay taxes 
And I do pay taxes. I pay property taxes. I might not be getting money right now because I'm not working, because I'm out, because I have a back injury. Okay? But the bottom line is, is I pay taxes. And again, you should be wondering about us. But no, no, you've got more important things to do. Workman's comp, you just look the other way. It's not called United States Workman's Comp. It's called Maryland Workman's Comp Commission. Okay? And it's your responsibility to make sure that it's running right. And it's your responsibility when a person like me says, look, this happened, this happened, and this happened, you guys can fix it by simply going in there and voting or changing it. But our legislators don't want to legislate. Why? It's beneath them. Doesn't mean anything to them. Again, it's Maryland Workman's Comp Commission. Everybody that has to go through it is a Marylander. Hence, guess what? We're somebody's constituent. Duh. This is too easy. And you people, look, again, I don't care if you like me. Could give a rat's ass. I'm a good person and I do good things for people. That's what I do. But when I get crapped on, you know I'm going to crap on somebody else. And that's what this is all about. So don't like my language. Like my language. If you click me off, I don't care. But do the right thing. By the way, get Delegate Myers to call me. My phone number on YouTube, 240-626-9577. My email, mhr914 at AOL.com. How hard is this? Get him to get in touch with me. By the way, apparently he's not going to be a delegate anymore. He's running for a commissioner's position. But does that mean that right now nothing matters anymore? That he's done? You know, he's not responsible for his constituents at this point? I wonder. And I wonder how many of you out there who just listened to this are willing to give me a call and say, Mark, you know what? I feel what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And I think that maybe we should look into something that you're talking about. It's real simple. It's not going to hurt anybody. What? You, you might take 10, 15 minutes. You might make a change for some Marylander. Somebody who's sitting there going, oh, my God, I'm hurting. I, I, I can't go back to work. But if I don't, our, our family's going to lose our house. We're going to lose everything. Think about that. These are Maryland residents. These aren't people throughout the country. Maryland Workmen's Comp Commission. You oversee it. Whether you, whether you think you don't or not, you do. You absolutely do. Please do the right thing. Find my <laughs> missing in action Leroy Myers delegate. Please tell him to give me a call. Hell, he can come up to my house. I'm home. I'm hurt recovering. Okay? He's more than welcome to come up here. I'll sit out on the front lawn. We can sip, we can sip lemonade and talk. But this is ridiculous. Enough is enough. Please help me as a Marylander, as a taxpayer, as a person. Can you help me? Please.